Okay, so first I'll just fix the the damage I did in the last lesson. Okay, so where we left off, we built a very simple routine that just inserts a block and it inserts it onto a layer. So I'm going to put a, a variable We'll create a variable. So all this line of code will do is it'll use the set queue function to set this variable to the to the current whatever the current layer is. So we'll plug that in. Any line of code, you can plug it into your Visual Lisp console. If you put it right on the bottom line. There, so my current layer is zero. So I'll go down here. Let's copy this this line of code, paste it here, and I'll set that to zero. Okay, so it insert, inserted my block on uh, on layer red. There seems to be a glitch in AutoCAD in the properties where it doesn't update the the layer's name. But let's draw a line and see if that, that's on layer zero. Okay, sure enough it is. So what happens when I use AutoList to insert a block? This just uh, doesn't update. And sure enough, if I press Control-1 to close my properties window and Control-1 to open it, that little glitch goes away. Let's do that again. See, it says layer red here, but I'm actually in layer zero. And a hint is that the color of the layer is white. Anyway, so that's fine and dandy. So I'm gonna run the code again. And I'm gonna hit escape. When you're in a code, an autolist code, and you hit escape, Autolist treats it as an error, command error function cancelled. And what that did is it left me in uh, in my routines layer. And again, that, that's not desirable for a few different reasons. My example from the last lesson is it could leave you in a no plotting layer. That can be a bit... Um, that can cause potential problems later on, right? So one way to prevent that is something called error trapping. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm actually going to pause the video and write the code and then explain line by line exactly what I did. Okay, I'm back and I've added an error trap to the code. So I'll just go through this code line by line to show you basically what I've done. The first thing I need to describe is this little variable. It's a user definable variable, but it's a special one. AutoList will look for this variable whenever the code encounters an error. So it's very important in how you deal with this variable. So the first thing we do when we're creating an error trap is we grab the error variable and store it in this user defined variable. The reason we do that is because if we don't do that, this function I have down here will become the error trap and that, that can uh, be inconvenient for other routines. So what we'll do is we'll make sure we keep this variable stored nice and safely. So this line of code already existed, so I'll skip down to here. This define function, I've named it block insert error trap. And then I have a, an argument that gets passed to it. That's just the error message that occurs when, 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 if and when an error does happen. So the first thing we have here is the set var function, c layer, user layer. That's the variable we grab from this line of code. The next piece of code in here is very important. We set the error back to the default error trap. We have this, this function here, and people call this print cleanly. What it does is stop all the junk appearing on your command line. And there's another, uh, there's another variable, uh, the command echo. I'm going to show you how to, how to toggle that on and off as well. I'll actually add that to the error trap just so you get a better uh, picture of what this does. And then, of course, we end this function. We'll, 
we use it within the routine it's nested so now what we do this next line of code we use the set queue function to set this very important variable to our newly defined block insert error trap then we have the rest of our code and then this line of code all I did this used to be layer 0 but now since we're defining the user's layer I've changed it to that variable that just means that instead of setting the uh, the the current layer back to zero it'll set the current layer to whatever the user was on prior to activating the function and this line of code right here is just setting that that error variable back to its default that we stored in this variable and then our function just ends uh, before I get get into this I'm just gonna I added a little line of code here this right here is what Autolist default error trap does. When you're coding, um, I do this all the time. I forget to add this line of code. I might forget to add this line of code. And then my, my default error variable gets something wacky stored in it or just something I don't quite want. It doesn't cause serious problems, but the, if you're doing lots of coding or using lots of different routines and you have one crash on you, it's best to have this because it displays the error message that occurs and that gives you an idea um, what actually went wrong like sometimes it'll say user variable nil that means you you passed a variable to a function that had nothing in it and it crashed or sometimes it'll say something else divide by zero or whatever but um, if you if you disturb this variable if you don't restore it or have something uh, useful plugged into it, you'll have no idea why your programs are, are crashing. It'll uh, it'll actually read this line of code, or it might read this line, line of code, and of course this variable won't have anything stored in it, it'll just be nil, so it'll it'll crash. So we'll try to set the, the C layer variable to nil, and that doesn't work. So anyways, I'm going to load this, and I'm going to run the command and test it out. So it works as normal like that okay that's as you can see that glitch is still occurring but we are we are in fact in layer zero so now I'm gonna try the function I'm gonna press escape right now to trigger the error function and let's see if it worked and it did so nothing appeared in the command line other than than this stuff because I have that uh, print clean function activated I'm just going to draw a line. If you didn't watch the last tutorial, I have the properties window open and the layer is displaying incorrectly. But we know it's, I know it's layer zero, I can tell by the color, but the, the telltale is whether or not this line is on layer zero. And in fact it is. So I remember there's a way to fix this. I'll try to remember that and maybe plug that into a, into a future lesson or add it in the, in the description below. Two more things I want to tack on to this lesson. I want to show you how to turn variables into local variables. And then I want to show you how to toggle the command echo on and off. What that will do is it'll stop when we run these commands, like the insert command and anything to do with layers. It'll basically prevent them from appearing in your command line. The command echo, you should be doing that last normally, but uh, in this case, this code, it doesn't really matter. But it'll, it'll stop here, it'll really clean up your command prompt while running your, your Autolist code. So to turn variables into local variables, all you gotta do is place them after this backslash. And what a local variable means is that when the code's done running, the variable gets, uh, gets turned to nil, it no longer stores anything in it. So about 30, 40, or 30 years ago, uh, computers didn't have nearly the memory, nearly the processing power they have now. So memory management was a much bigger deal, but um, anything we, we have in here, in any of these variables, it, it's kilobytes at, at most. So it's not, it's not a big deal, but it just makes your code a lot more professional. And also, occasionally, if you, if you have variables floating around your AutoCAD file, and you're using a lot of different Lisp routines, sometimes they can clash with one another. So it's just very professional to to make sure if it doesn't need to be a global variable, you make it such by simply putting it after this backslash. So if you're wondering how to make a global variable, you just wouldn't do what I'm doing right now. You just you just leave it here and, and not do anything with it. 
So this is something you should be doing as as you build your code because I might accidentally copy something twice into here. I'm only copying variables. So maybe I missed one. So I don't want to copy this. I know it's in black, but that's not really a variable. And this right here is actually an argument. It's not it's not a variable. So as you might have guessed, this function I haven't put the backslash there. I don't need it in that case, but if I put something here, it would be an argument. Any variable I put there, it's not so much a variable, but a variable would get passed to it. Those are called arguments, and I'll get into that later in this tutorial series, and you'll have a co more complete idea on how to use this de defined function. Okay, so I think that's done. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to... Uh, there's a variable called... a. Uh, CMD echo. I'm pretty sure that stands for command echo. So when that's turned to one, when you're running these Lisp routines, when you use this command function, all the all the variables passed to it will appear in your command line. Once your code's debugged, once it's working like you want, you probably don't want that to show up in your command line. It doesn't really hurt anything, but it's it's better not to have it. It'll make your code more professional looking. It'll make it run more like an actual actual um, out of the box AutoCAD routine, let's say. So let's make a variable set Q So now that we grab this, I'm going to put it into the error trap right now. So I'm going to go set var. Now this is either one or zero, but I'm just I'm just going to pass the variable to it just to make it look uh, more consistent. And this would help because if uh, if a user has the, their command echo set to zero all the time then it would stay as they prefer rather than forcing it to a different value. Another thing I need to do is I need to add it to the end of my routine. So basically anything that you put in the error trap should also appear down here. This applies for simpler routines. This won't always be the case, but for a simple routine like this, we want this to pretty much be the same as this. check my routine so I've got a lot of Sun glaring on my screen right now I'm gonna use that as an excuse if I accidentally did something wrong here anyways I'm gonna load so as you can see I'll scroll up on scroll up on the I'll see if I can scroll to it Let's see. Oh yeah, so when I ran the command before, you can see that the the dash insert appears on my command line and, and the codes like the scale, all this stuff. So now when I run the command, it just says block one. It just says the command's name. I'll make sure my error trap still works. Yeah, it does. Okay, so since we're well over 10 minutes into this video, I think I'm gonna wrap things up here. Stay tuned because there's much more interesting concepts coming up in future videos in this series. So stay tuned for that and thanks very much for watching up to this point.